the internet. In a suitcase, in a nondescript Washington office building, a group of computer experts are assembling portable kits to allow activists to set up and maintain computer networks out of the control of some governments. What we're trying to do here is, is to use sort of very off-the-shelf equipment that pretty much is widely available across the world. Individuals and communities can sort of communicate with each other, share information, uh, coordinate on protests and, and free speech, and, and without sort of interference from a government, an oppressive government. And the project has won the support of the U.S. government, which is reportedly pouring millions of dollars into this and similar ideas. We want to make sure that the tools to communicate at the local level are in the hands of the people that have more something to say and protect the right for free speech. But where are the suitcases being deployed and who will use them? We put those questions to the State Department, but they have not yet responded. Many governments would object to Washington helping groups bypass their controls and local laws. During the Egyptian Revolution, cyber activists played a key role. They denounced human rights violations and helped people organize while staying anonymous. Rami Raouf is one of those Cairo-based activists, and he now spends time helping groups in other countries avoid government censorship. We always do trainings and we write manuals and guides in Arabic to people um, on how can they maintain their privacy and security online, and how can they stay anonymous online. Using new means to establish parallel networks is another sign that today's liberation battles are increasingly being fought in cyberspace, and those with the right technology will have the upper hand. Monica Villamizar, Al Jazeera, Washington. Now, for more on this, I'm joined by Joshua King. He's a technologist for the New America Foundation's Open Technology Initiative. He has years of experience in developing software and hardware for nonprofit organizations. Josh, thanks for joining us this evening. Well, Thank you. Let me try to understand this. Now, what the team is trying to establish here is an alternative network in a country which can operate independently of controls by that country's government, uh, normally in a repressive regime. Uh, how does that work? Well, it, it's a project to develop a, a set of uh, software tools that can operate on a wide variety of different devices, off-the-shelf uh, uh, consumer Wi-Fi routers like you might have in your home or your office, uh, smartphones, uh, laptops, uh, and more sophisticated devices, but all essentially using uh, the similar kinds of uh, connectivity that are uh, really widely found, namely uh, Wi-Fi, because those devices are cheap. And right. So you get all these uh, things together, assemble them in a certain way, mm -hmm. and then you put them in a suitcase. Yes. Well, the, uh, the idea of the suitcase is that uh, if you could get an ideal set of hardware to uh, take into uh, one of these uh, crisis areas like, like Egypt and um, be able to deploy it, like what, what would you put in there? And so the, the idea is that we can take this software and put it on these uh, consumer-grade routers that are uh, able to uh, connect device to device over a wide area and provide services to activists to allow them to communicate uh, with each other or if there's a connection to the internet uh, communicate more globally. So you are using some of the infrastructure that is already in place there? That's right. Well, the, the uh, because the software, because we chose uh, Wi-Fi as a communications platform, right, right. the uh, software it can run on a huge variety of devices, and and there are you know more ideal devices uh, that are that still use Wi-Fi that are um, the kinds that were in the suitcase that they showed that uh, yeah. are the kind that an internet service provider might use that can communicate over miles, but still using the same technology. But if you can't get the suitcase into into a country, you can still use the software on devices that are already on the ground, like right. old PCs and laptops. Okay, which brings me to my next question, and that is, you have the suitcase internet, so to speak. Uh, has it been deployed in any countries already? Well, parts of it have been deployed. The, uh, the entire uh, project is to sort of take these existing open source technologies and combine them together into one infrastructure that it doesn't take a, uh, an engineer with a computer science degree to be able to deploy it somewhere. So there are parts of these network, uh, parts of the network that have been deployed on a large scale in uh, you know, various places in Europe where there are like uh, hundreds of nodes in metro scale networks using the same kinds of underlying technology that are being used mm -hmm. in, in our project. Okay, Josh, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.